<laughs> Today, Apple announced their latest version of macOS, Ventura. So I've got the developer beta installed, and in today's video, we are going to go over the new features, both ones that Apple talked about at today's keynote and some stuff that they left out. So leave a like down below, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, and let's dive in to macOS Ventura. Today's video is sponsored by Render Forest, an online platform where all your design tools are in one place. If you're a content creator or video editor, Render Forest can speed up your workflow dramatically with customizable motion graphics, typography, 3D animations, and more. I made the animation that you just saw using Render Forest, and creating them couldn't be easier. With a vast collection of templates and presets, you can put together an animated text slide easily, or you can customize with tools like a logo maker, text to video animations, and customization for widescreen, one-to-one, -one, and vertical video. With both 2D and 3D motion graphics available, you can make animation intros, product overviews, slide decks, or just animated text overlays for your existing video. If you're looking to level up your video with high quality graphics and animations, check out the link in the description below to save 20% off all yearly subscription models. That link is valid until August 31st. And now let's get back to the video. So first off, the big thing that a lot of you are going to be wondering is if your Mac is supported with the new version of Mac OS announced today at WWDC 2022. And I'm sorry to say that Apple is very quickly wiping out older Intel Macs. This is something that a lot of us were afraid was going to happen when the Apple Silicon transition started two years ago. And today it continued. To run macOS Ventura, you're going to need an iMac or iMac Pro from 2017 and later, a MacBook Air from 2018 and later, MacBook Pro from 2017 and later, 12-inch MacBook from 2017, Mac Mini from 2018 or later, or the current Mac Pro from 2019. The trash can Mac Pro is dead after nine years and Apple even stopped supporting the original Touch Bar MacBook Pros from 2016. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you think Apple was a bit too heavy handed with the Mac hammer this time around? Let me know in the comments below. And now let's dive into some of the new features. The headline feature of macOS Ventura is Stage Manager, a new feature designed for both the Mac and iPad that lets you organize your windows and reduce clutter on the desktop. Here for example is my 14 inch MacBook Pro with a plethora of open applications that are creating quite a bit of a mess. Normally in macOS you have a couple of options to deal with that. You can resize and move around windows or you can use Mission Control to see them all. Stage Manager makes this a lot easier. All we have to do is go up into Control Center and toggle Stage Manager, and all of the background applications move off to the left, leaving only the one that was most recently open left on top. Clicking on other apps will swap them back and forth. Now, I did notice that there is quite a bit of lag in the animation. I'm on a 14-inch MacBook Pro, which has a ProMotion display, but the animations look like they're running at maybe 30 FPS. Now, if you have multiple windows of the same application, like I do here with Pages, you can click over on the sidebar and it will cycle between the different windows that you had open. The thing that's a little bit irritating is that it's not giving me the third window that I have open. It's a little weird. I don't know if you caught that from that recording, but if I click slowly, it's gonna go back and forth. I need to click quickly for it to go to the one in the back. That could definitely take a little bit of getting used to. But what's not difficult to get used to is creating groups of applications. If I wanna add maps to my pages window here, I just drag it in and there it is. And then if I swap over here, you'll notice that pages, that one particular window and maps are now grouped together. So when I click over here, both of them are gonna come out. So creating groups is useful not just because it keeps things together, but because you can keep certain windows from certain applications away from the other windows of the same application. Did that, did that make sense? 
I think that makes sense. And one of the other nice things about Stage Manager is that it respects the windows that you have open on a particular desktop. So if I swipe over here, you'll notice I have a different group of applications open on this particular side. Now, you may have also noticed there that you can completely cover up the Stage Manager windows. And if I leave them here, they're just fully gone. If I move the window back, they come back. So if you want these applications to be sort of hiding in the background, you can actually resize a window and make it pretty much full screen and still have your other windows open. In fact, if I go to Mission Control, look at that, they come right back. I can even quite easily take this window and drag it over into the other desktop where it will replace whatever was open and now this window is going to exist in Stage Manager over here. Now there are a couple of things about Stage Manager that I'm not a super big fan of. So for one, if you're uh, the type of person who loves to have a bunch of windows open and then have stuff on your desktop that you drag into those windows, this makes things a little bit more difficult. So let's say, for example, that I wanna add an image to this pages document. If this were open normally, I would have all of the files on my desktop over here and I could drag one of them in. But because Stage Manager hides everything on the desktop, in order to get it back, I have to click over here, which then minimizes the pages document. So I then have to grab this, drag it over, wait for it to double flash, and then add my thumbnail to this document. The other thing that I'm not a huge fan of about Stage Manager is exiting it. Getting into it is very easy. You just go to Control Center and toggle it on. But to get out of it, we have to go back to Control Center, click on Stage Manager, and now we get this option, which allows us to show or hide recent apps and also toggle it off. Then to get out of that, we click and click again. So it's a little bit irritating to get out. I think it should probably just be a toggle, but that is the way that it works. Do you like that? Let me know in the comments below. Another feature that I was able to get working is continuity camera. You can see I'm using it here. It actually does work in QuickTime Player, which is something that Apple didn't talk about. You can use this for movie recording. Now, obviously I don't have one of those little mounts that allows you to put the phone up there. So I use tape and it's working pretty well. The thing that's absolutely mind blowing to me is just how little latency there is. I mean, you can see a very slight delay, but we are streaming video from the phone to this MacBook wirelessly, and it's really, really good. Now, you can actually change settings so you can use the iPhone's microphone or the MacBook's microphone. You can use the camera from the iPhone and the microphone from the MacBook if you want. And all of this works in FaceTime, in QuickTime Player, in Zoom. The only thing I was not able to get working is Desk View. It doesn't seem like they've implemented that because I can't find a button or a toggle that turns that on anywhere. But either way, it's super duper cool. So now let's talk about Spotlight, which gains additional functionality, including searching for text inside images, quick look by tapping space, and rich results for searches in Spotlight directly. So for example, if I wanna look up Post Malone, I can type that in here, and instead of just getting all of the typical Google searches, I'm also gonna get some web images. Now those rich Spotlight searches haven't been fully implemented because the interface that Apple showed off in the keynote looks different than what is actually available now, but there are some features that we have access to. For example, if I type cats, I'm not just gonna get normal results, I'm also going to get photo results that it has scanned as containing cats. Moving on, we have some universal features that are available on multiple platforms from iOS to macOS to iPadOS. One of those is the ability to copy the subject of a photo. To do this on the Mac, find a photo that you would like, right click, and if you hover over copy subject, you'll see this fun little animation highlighting the subject of the photo. If I click on that and then go over here into pages, I can paste the subject of the photo and it will show up right here front and center. So you can see it worked pretty well in this example. We only have like a little bit here where it didn't quite get the rest of the cat, but it doesn't always work this well. This photo, for example, looks pretty easy to isolate a subject, 
but if we copy it and paste it over here, you'll find this rather grotesque creation in which a cat has severed the arm of an innocent human. But now I think it's time to get to a slightly juicier part of this video where we get to talk about some of these tidbits and features that Apple didn't talk about at WWDC. To start off, System Preferences has been completely rebuilt and is no longer called System Preferences. It's called System Settings. And when you click it, you'll notice a completely redesigned interface. It adopts the visual style of the rest of Mac OS with the sidebar rather than the rows of icons that was used since the very first OS X back in 2001. It includes more variety of settings panes that are named more clearly to allow for ease of use. For example, lock screen, desktop and dock, and appearance are all separated now and their function is much more obvious. And speaking of appearance, the new dark version of the default wallpaper for Ventura is really, really good. Let me know in the comments below, do you prefer light or dark? Next up, Apple added the clock app to Mac OS. This might seem like a pretty simple thing. It's basically just ported over with the same world clock, alarm, stopwatch, and timer functionality that you would find on the clock app on iOS. But this is actually kind of a big deal because previously, if you wanted to start a timer on a Mac, you couldn't. You could ask Siri and she would literally create a reminder that said timer in the amount of time that you wanted the timer for. That's not exactly helpful. So now you can just go in here and do it right away. Or you can say, start timer for 10 minutes and it'll actually do it for once. Thank you. Another feature that we get now is the weather application. It's not just for iPad OS, now we have it here on the Mac. It kind of looks like a bunch of widgets and well, it does exactly what you would expect. It gives you access to pop out some of these little widgets by clicking on them and uh, what do you want? It's a weather app, it's nice, here it is. Another cool feature, that definitely needs some work is universal live captions. If you go into the accessibility settings, there's a new tab for live captions. And when you enable that, it'll bring up a dialog box and will transcribe all of the audio that's playing on the machine. Now, it doesn't really work all that well. Uh, I was initially able to get it to transcribe some of what was going on, but when I tried recording it for the video, well, it didn't quite, it didn't really work. Does need some work though, in order to make it actually function. But those are the highlights, the main features of macOS Ventura. I think this year's update was a pretty good one. I think obviously Stage Manager is going to make a big difference, not just here on the Mac, but also on the iPad. So I am planning to do a somewhat deeper dive, actually trying to use my iPad Pro as a legitimately useful desktop-like device. So if you wanna see that video, make sure to leave a comment down below asking me what you'd like me to talk about. And of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can actually see it. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your favorite feature of macOS Ventura was, and I will see you in the next one.